What is up guys, this is the Average Johnny coming back to you with yet another Average video and we are finally back with another Simpsons Hit and Run Top 10 list. Now, what are we going to be looking at today? Something that I'm quite excited to do, but it is going to be a little tricky. It is going to be the Top 10 Hardest Collector Cards to Find. Why exactly is it going to be a little tricky? Because it's going to be totally subjective. Because we all have different styles of how we play the game and because of that, we all have different ways of exploring leading us to find the collector cards at different times and it makes it easier or harder for us based on how we do it. So how exactly am I going to rank these? It's going to go one way or the other. It's going to be either how hard they were to find or how hard they were <laughs> to get to once you actually found them. So it's going to be based on one or the other. And just for that, it should be a pretty fun list to do. So you know what? Let me stop talking about this random intro. Let's get right into the video. I just know for a fact I'm gonna get roasted for this one. Number 10, we have the Radioactive Man Collector card from level 6. So why exactly was this difficult for me? I don't know. When I saw this collector card immediately I thought, oh this is gonna be a piece of cake, you know, I'm just gonna jump up and get it somehow. I could not find a way to do it, I don't know why. I was trying all kinds of these weird methods, I was trying to jump out a wall of weasels with the car as fast as I can. I tried to do all kinds of alternative jumping methods and I couldn't think of anything and eventually it started eating me alive. So then I was wondering, what the fuck am I going to do? What did I do? I did what anyone would do. I went to YouTube, I looked up a tutorial, and I felt so stupid because little would I have ever guessed that all I had to do was grab the itchy and scratchy truck and I would just have to uh, jump on top of it and that's it. There you go, you got the collector card. Guys, I don't know why it was so difficult for me. If you guys want to roast me in the comments for that, go right ahead. I felt completely stupid once I realized it, but it is going to be my number 10 spot. Number 9, we have a Poos t-shirt in level 5. So, this one is another one of those personal, like, difficulty for me. It was a personal, personally difficult for me. And let me explain to you guys why. Uh, there's, there's two, two ways to kind of get up here. You can either drive your car up on this little ramp on the little construction site, and then you could just kind of park it there and just land it correctly. Or the other way is just to take the elevator. I, for some reason, decided to do it the very difficult way and try to land my car in there. So that was the first part of it being difficult for me. The second part is I was a bit terrible with my jumps. I was kind of terrible with like my timing. So because of that, it was a little tedious for me to get. But other than that, it wasn't really that difficult for me. So we'll just kind of leave it at that. Kind of difficult, a little bit tricky sometimes depending on how your play style is. But nonetheless, it is a number nine. Hitting and running into the number eight spot, we have the Schmarch Calendar from level seven. So why exactly would this be another uh, considered difficult to get to, to get to? It is because we have to climb the wreckage. Same old reason I put that there is something about Monty on my top 10 hardest missions list. The wreckage was a little tricky to climb when we first had to do it, but once we got up there, everything was pretty simple from there. Unless you were terrible with the trap doors, then of course it would be another chore for you to have to handle. But other than that, it's not really that difficult to find, but it is a little bit tricky to get to once you are at the very top. And at number 7, we have the Spine Melter 2000 from level 1. So what exactly was difficult about this one? It's the fact that it's in a very obscure little location going past the power plant. Once you go to the back area, then it's right like in between the mansion as well. There's like this little alleyway where you can really enter. And then what happens is you're going to drive past it. And often it's only a... There's only one way that you can really drive past it. And because of that, you don't really see that it's in behind this little corner area. And because of that, you don't really see it. And you might drive past it. And for the... It might become a little hard to find every once in a while, so it is kind of hard to spot uh, when if you're driving constantly like around and if you're not like hopping out the car to explore it a little bit, then it does become a bit of a chore to figure it out. So, nonetheless, it will just take the number seven spot because it is not really that much of a challenge in the end of the day. This is another one I'm sure I'm gonna get roasted on for sure. Number six spot we have the Insanity Pepper in level one. Yeah. I definitely had trouble with something that was definitely uh, from the corner of the house of the Simpsons house and for some reason I struggled for a long time to find it. Yeah, uh, when I look, when I drive by and see all these normal looking buildings, I never thought that one of them was going to hold a freaking collector card in the backyard. I didn't know that. I was just like super confused uh, when, when, I, when I found out that I couldn't find the last collector card when I first played this game. I was like, where the hell could it be? And I'm just like, you know, looking all over driving around the entire map over and over again and I just can never find it until one day once again tutorial saved my life and I realized that apparently Chief Wiggum's house was accessible and in the backyard you know you have a sandbox you got Ralph there who you can talk to or beat the crap out of beat the crap out of much preferably but yeah the, then the, you have a nice little box of coins that you can collect and then of course you have the insanity pepper collector card I never thought to look in a very generic place like that and because of that I drove through it all the time and uh, yeah 
it left me in a very tough spot because I was not that much of an explorer. So there you go. Number six. Number five. We now have the Australia boot in level six. Why exactly was this hard to find for me? Because the crane that you have to use to take it, which is the, well, you know, the crane that has the platform on it, is because I just never thought that it was ever actually part of the, of like the map. I thought it was just there for decoration. I didn't even know it was accessible. So because of that, I never really thought to use it and to hop onto the ship on the very edge and let alone run around all the way around because I get too lazy, you know? I know it's a game, but even then I get too lazy to do it. So because of that, I kind of drove past it all the time and I never really knew about it until like one day I was just doing a hard search on these collector cards and then I <laughs> eventually I did find out that I could hop on the platform and therefore I found out that it was there. So it was pretty difficult to locate and therefore it is now at the number five spot. Running into the number four spot, we have Lisa's machine in level three. So this is another one of those uh, personal like, how much do you explore in this map? This is basically how, how it was going to come down to if you found a collector card or not. Because if you don't, you're most likely not going to find it. It's in this really like obscure location inside Krusty Loo Studios behind all the lampposts and everything. But honestly, the coins kind of give it away because there's like a lot of coins kind of leading to the trails and everything. And eventually that will probably lead you to it. But other than that, I was not that much of an explorer even when I saw a bunch of coins. And because of that, I never really thought to even look in this location in the first place. It took me a while, it actually took me till I actually ended the game, so I actually beat all the missions and everything, and then I started going back and rotating. It's in this very, like, back location, and for some reason I just never thought to look here in the back. Once I saw it, I was like, oh shit, here it is, you know? Here we go, all the collector cards. And so, yeah, that was that. This is a very, like, very hidden location, kind of, uh, especially if you're not one of those people that actually explores the entire map. So because of that, I didn't exactly know where this collector card would be, therefore it is going to be at the number 3 spot. Coming in at the number 4 spot, we have the Hell's Toupee from level 7. Yeah, if you were not a good platformer, this one was going to be quite freaking difficult for you. So basically, all you have- it's a very simple task, it's very easy to find, but what happens is, you can either get it out of two ways. You can get a really, really well-timed jump in a car, and then you can get the collector card immediately, but often I was terrible at it, I couldn't do it. So I had no choice but to go for the platforming. So what happens is you have to jump into the water, and there are a number of coffins that you have to jump onto, and then you just have to hop onto each and every one of them, and then you finally get to reach the collector card. The problem is, if you even mistimed your jump, you would fall in the water, you'd be reset, you have to run back and redo it again. My god, was that the most annoying thing ever. I couldn't stand it. I was, a, like I said, I was terrible with my timing. My platforming was not really well. And because of that, I always failed at trying to get this collector card. And I think it very well deserves a spot on this list. Very easy to find, but such a troll because of the way it freaking it challenges you to platform. Okay, do I really want to go here? Number two, it's Mr. Burns' portrait in level four. Yeah, this one took me quite a while to find. Especially, once again, it does come down to how you explore. But honestly, when we saw that Mr. Burns' mansion was going to be accessible to get into, of course we were going to look around and see what we could find. But the thing is, I never actually thought that there, there was a freaking way to actually get to the collector card. I didn't even know that there was a collector card in this uh, certain room in the, in the mansion. And because of that, I never found this one. It took me so long to find it. Guys, you have no idea how much it stressed me out. All I saw was like, why is Mr. Burns' portrait glittering so much? And I just kept thinking to myself, like, how could this be? Why, why, why is that? So, I just saw the glittering portrait, and honestly, I would just like walk around, I would, I would kill the wasp that was in there, and that's pretty much it. I kind of left it alone. Never in a million years did I even bother that there was a, even a little switch there, and I would always just walk out of the mansion thinking, okay, that's it. It was just here for the wasp, and that's about it. But, honestly, I felt like a complete idiot once I actually saw the switch and hit it. So, it is one of those things that is completely uh, hard to find if you're not one of those, like, uh, explorative people. So, therefore, that was my reason for missing it. Honestly, should I even bother telling you where the number one spot was even located? It's in our favorite level of all time. It's level six. It's the Gabo Dot, man. I don't know where to start with this one. This one stressed me out so much. I pretty much, if it was a hard mission, I would put this at a close number two. Like seriously, finding this collector card had me pulling out my hair for fucking weeks. It literally took me at least two weeks to even find this thing. When I was fully exploring for all the collector cards once I finished the missions, that was it. This was the card that freaking wrecked my life, man, because I could not find it. It took me so long to find, and it, this was the very last collector card that I had to find in the game. I completed everything. The lost cameras, the gags, the races, clothing, cars, everything. It was just that one little freaking collector card that was so hard to find. 
Why was it so hard to find? Because we drive past it nearly every single time. We, we drive past it, we don't even think, huh, we should stop right behind this phone booth and think maybe there's something for us to explore. No, none of us ever thought that. It's hidden behind trees, it's hidden behind these rocks, and it's apparently on top of these two little rocks that no one would ever think to stop there. And because of that, I never even thought that I would have to look in this very location. It stressed me out for a long time, and I don't know, I don't even remember how I found it. I really don't know. I was just happy I did. But th this collector card was just one of the, uh, is it what? was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do like seriously I never thought that I would ever have to look in such an obscure location and because of that it is gonna take my number one spot you guys it's level six once again Bart man you just what is wrong with you <laughs> There you go guys, that was my top 10 hardest collector cards to find. Let me know in the comments below which ones were the most difficult for you to find, or let me know how much you want to troll me about how the selections that I picked. Either one is fine with me. <laughs> but do drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you would like for more future top 10 videos, and of course for any other future content that I have on other video games as well. Hopefully you guys will be tuning in, and I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Have a great day you guys. Thank you so much.